Hi class, we're going to continue where we left off last night. And uh, as I said last night, uh, when you watch this YouTube video, if you look down in this corner of the screen, the lower uh, right hand corner, you'll see a little like an incomplete box with four corners. If you click that, it'll go to full screen. Click uh, 720 HD and it will be higher resolution and make things easier to see on the screen. Now, a few things from the login page. One is test your browser. And if you click here, this little application runs a check on your computer to see if all the settings are correct. And this, if you go through all of these, it looks like mine's got an exclamation point down here that I need to uh, update my Java. But if you go through this, it'll make sure that everything in your computer is set correctly so that Blackboard will be fully functional. One of the best things you can do is not use Internet Explorer because many functions of Blackboard are not functional on Blackboard no matter what you do. So I use Firefox, Mozilla Firefox, it's a free download, or you can uh, also use Safari, which and, and I think some people also use Google Chrome with good success. Uh, here's a browser check that will tell you um, what the list of supported browsers. All right, so that'll save you a lot of trouble. Let's back up now. Also, email account setup. If you're activating your Wayland email, I told you last night, I'll be returning all your papers, uh, your graded assignments through your Wayland email account. So you need to get that activated. We talked about safe assignment last night, and here's a link to talking about how to use that. If you have problems with anything, if you scroll down here, there's a place for there's live chat available. And there's a 24-7 toll-free number here that you can call to get assistance. All right, let's log into the Blackboard site. Once you get into the Blackboard site, if you're new to using Blackboard <clears throat> with Wayland, you can change the default password to something of your choosing by going to Personal Information. And when you click in there, you see change password is right there. If you're tired of seeing all of your courses listed that you've ever taken here in this box, you can change that by going to this little cog wheel right here. And if you click that, it shows you a list of all the classes that you've taken. And then the ones that are actually checked are the ones that show up. So if you uncheck them, they will go away on your list. And there's actually one I want to get rid of. I think it's on the second page here. So, well, I thought there was a page too, maybe not. Sorry, I'm flailing here. Uh, in any case, I'll figure that out later. Um, but So if you don't want to see something, you just click there or uncheck it. And then it won't appear right here. So you can do just the classes you're taking this term. If you go over to courses, so WBU shows you the ones that you do want to see this term. This one will list all the classes you have uh, ever taken with Wayland. So that will give you the entire list. So even if you uncheck something, you can still get to it. It's just in a longer listing. And I like to uncheck classes I'm not currently teaching just because it makes it a lot easier to see and I don't have to worry about clicking into the wrong class and doing something I shouldn't be doing in the wrong place. Okay, now let's go into the uh, Research Writing Methods class. And when I get in here, I want to show you where uh, there are a few things. Uh, one is the assignments area of the website. This is where we had the information from last night, and this folder is where I'll actually put this video when I get done recording it. The next uh, area is the assignment. I mean, the class stuff. This is where your sample assignments are. So if we go in here to sample assignments, you can see all of the uh, sample assignments I gave you last night in class. They're all here. Notice they're all in Word format. So you can use um, the 
the format, since the files are pre-formatted pre for you, all you have to do is go in and change the information if you want to do that. We back up one more and go down to Web Goodies. I made that name up myself. There's the Alaska Digital Pipeline brochure. I think last night I talked to you about how the state of Alaska subscribes to some of the same databases that we subscribe to for our students, but the state does it just for all of its residents. This brochure talks about the Alaska Digital Pipeline. This is actually a link to the hyperlink to the Digital Pipeline. So if you click there, it will take you into the pipeline. And then here is where the research guides are categorized by age group. Let's click into College, Academic Search Premier, Agricola, Eric, all those are databases we subscribe to through Wayland. And so if you click on Academic Search Premier, it will take you into exactly the same database that you will find on the Wayland side. And it looks just the same. It's an EBSCO database. I talked to you about the Testing Education Research, uh, Reference Center last night, I think. I have two research classes. I can't remember what I've talked about in which class. But uh, this has all kinds of study guides and uh, help for students studying for college entrance exams and that kind of thing. This is a link to the UAA Consortium Library. This one down here is a link to the Purdue University Online Writing Lab. I only steal the best. And this is a great place to look at, uh, for instance, summaries of styles like APA, MLA, uh, so you can take a look at all those. Let's back up one now. Down uh, here under this folder, you'll see that there are exam study guides. There are study guides for the midterm and final exam here. And then at the, the very bottom, there's an APA 6th edition checklist. You can look at that, but we're going to go over that in class later on this term. And then there's a presentation evaluation sheet that shows you the, the sheet I use to evaluate the formal presentations at the end of the term. Down here at the bottom, there's the WBU, the Wayland Online Library. So let's, I'll just click there and take you into the main library page. This uh, area is very uh, important. This is for distance students. And here is the toll-free number you can call where the distance librarian that's dedicated to helping you that you pay for. You have people. You pay for them. And, and this is where you get hold of them to help you with doing research. If Last night we talked about that interlibrary loan uh, it, for books or articles is included in your tuition. And so if you want to request a book, the form you fill out, the link to it is right there. Material request form. And if you want to request an article, there's another link right there for requesting an article. And if you request books from the main campus, they will send them to you with return postage. Okay, let's back up one. Okay, simple search is what we talked about just a little last night. This is the main search for Wayland. So if we click full text, peer reviewed, uh, this will search only those kinds of sources in the Wayland system. And we'll do business ethics again like we did last night. I think actually when we did the peer review example, that's what we used as a subject. Let's do a search. We'll probably get a million hits here. Now, when I do the search, this is, uh, of course, this material is protected and it's for Wayland students only. So it's going to ask for your username and password. The username is your student ID number. Password, the first three letters of your first name, followed by the first three letters of your last name, all lowercase and no spaces. So we'll log in here and hopefully it won't take too long to log in. We'll see here. But when we get in here, one of the first things you want to do is create yourself an EBSCO account. All right, so now we're in and we see we've got 680,000 sources on business ethics. 
And if we scroll down here, you see that the, the list begins in 1847. Well, I don't want to go back that far. Let's just do the last 10 years. Let's go to 2004. And that should cut down the references somewhat. I like the little slider thing. That's pretty cool. So this will update. And we should have fewer sources. It's searching a lot, so it takes a little while to do this. Okay, now we're down to 421,940 sources. Let's take a look at this first peer-reviewed source. It's from the journal Business Ethics Quarterly. And if we click into the reference here, there are a few things to remember. One is that everything in blue is hyperlinked, so click it. So, for, for instance, this person may have written other articles on the same topic. Let's see if he has. Maybe. The point is that anything in blue is hyperlinked, so it's fair to explore. Uh, while that's searching, let me go over here to this side. Under tools here, you see um, that uh, if you, I'm not going to stop doing that search. It's taking too long. But anyway, you can click on the author to see what else they've written. Um, you can uh, have a folder and add articles to a folder while you're doing surfing. You can print the article. You can email it to yourself. You can save it to a jump drive if you're on a, like a university computer in a library somewhere. Uh, or you can just save it to your home computer. This little icon right here is Cite. And if you click that, the APA style citation pops up here. Now these are not always accurate. Sometimes the people that do these reference formatting don't actually know the details of APA. So it's your responsibility to be sure all the details are correct. The most common error in APA reference style is they'll make the title all uppercase. And uh, they should never be all uppercase. The other is that they will not capitalize them sentence style. Like you see, this one is done incorrectly. Uh, it should be, this is capitalized headline style, and it shouldn't be. But what you can do is, uh, you can just copy and paste this, and you have the basic formatting and the DOI. And, uh, and so that's, that's really handy. Um, then up here is where you can sign in to your EBSCO account. You can create an account in EBSCO, which I recommend you do. It'll help you to organize what you're doing. It's kind of like an Amazon account. It'll keep track of what you've done. And uh, you can put your username and password in here. I just use the one that I use for Blackboard to make it simple. But here is where you create a new account if you don't have one. <coughs> EBSCO is such a big company, uh, and we have so many databases through them, I really recommend that you create one of these accounts. But it's a separate sign-in process to coming into the library, so you need to remember to sign in when you come into the uh, session and or get into an EBSCO database. Okay, uh, once I'm signed in, I can attach notes to articles, and uh, those will always be there. Uh, even next term, you can come back and log into your EBSCO account, and they'll still be there. Over here is the PDF to the full text of the article. And notice uh, that this article has uh, somewhere, I saw it earlier, a DOI number right here. Uh, and many, many times when people get an article from an EBSCO database, they'll put retrieve from in the hyperlink where they got it. The problem is that databases are often reorganized. So if I click that hyperlink two weeks after you put it in a paper, it won't be there anymore. The DOI, though, is... It stands for Digital Object Identifier, and it's a persistent link to that source, something like a library call number. So if we go back to the way this thing looks as an APA citation, you see the DOI number is the last thing listed there, and that's always preferred to retrieve from because it is a persistent address for that resource. Okay, let's back out of this. So Simple Search is a great place to, to begin your research. And I don't think I'm going to go a whole lot further than that in this uh, tour, except to show you a couple of things. Uh, one is um, 
ask a librarian if you have a question you can uh, there's a place for you a form where you can ask your question there they'll normally respond within 24 within one working day there's tutorials for how to do searches on the library website over here uh, it's a very important link is research guides and here we have a research guide for business and technology we have one for psychology and sociology uh, religion and philosophy but let's just look at business business and technology since a lot of you are in um, uh, management or business specialization um, so this gives you some ideas about how to get started in doing research this catalog search is for the Plainview campus so you shouldn't be too too worried about that one here are the recommended databases they found that are good for businesses this is beyond simple search um, then further on down uh, there's some other websites that they have vetted but there are other tabs here if you go to books uh, EBSCO ebooks is a pretty limited collection I think there's only 400,000 volumes in there we're adding volumes all the time but there'll be lots of business titles the nice thing about EBSCO ebooks is that they are full text online right now and the text is searchable you can't download the whole thing because of copyright issues but you can look at the book and search it online so there's a really useful source for books here are the recommended databases and we have lots of them simple search of course is the first one but here are the subscription databases this is what I was talking about last night that the university pays three hundred thousand dollars a year for for you and so you can see them all here and this is just for business and then down here at the bottom here are the open source databases these are free freely available on the internet but the librarians have vetted them for you many of these publish uh, peer-reviewed research so those can be really useful to you and let's go back up to the top now there's also a list of journal titles and then useful websites just on the general internet now something about searching on the general internet is that you can get in trouble because anything anybody can publish anything on the internet and there's no quality control but these websites are the ones that have been vetted by our reference librarians as being reliable like the Academy of Management for instance or the US Bureau of Labor Statistics those have been vetted as being high quality places to find references for your papers and so if you stay within the boundaries our librarians have drawn for you uh, you will be um, a whole lot better off somebody's interested in, in um, music research and uh, so there's an opera web standards curriculum um, I think that has to do with music I'm not sure it's a business website so maybe not so that's a good place to start too all right let's go back just to the regular LRC page simple search is a good place to, to go to begin with don't forget to check full text and peer-reviewed when you do your searches and be thinking about a research topic uh, to do and I'll see you in class at the library not at Wayland but at the UAA consortium library will meet in the great room by the rock wall at uh, 615 next Tuesday night so I'll see you there if you have any questions between now and then or ideas about for your paper call me or send me an email thanks